Hi, and welcome to this uh, video on uh, hacks with the query string. The query string is the rightmost part of uh, the URL. And since Business Central is now running all in a, in a browser, uh, we can actually use the URL for gaining an alternative way to, uh, to, to communicate with Business Central. Um, let me start by showing you guys an example from the real life. Um, I got a Business Central here, and in this one, I have the the SharePoint Connector app installed. Um, part of the SharePoint Connector app is that it connects, hence the name, to, to SharePoint. And uh, part of the OAuth protocol for connecting does a redirect URL that calls back into uh, a trusted URL to give you the access code. So. Pay attention because this is going to fly by fast. So I hit connect. I open a window that pops up another window. In this window, we we actually log in, but since I'm logged in, it's already done. So this one will redirect back to Business Central end of window. And then the first window, something happened. So when the external bit redirects to Business Central here, um, we intercept that, use the information supplied by the Microsoft login and, and stores a access token, um, all through the URL. Um, and in this video, I'm, I'm going to show you how, how you can do that yourself uh, in, in your app. And, and the, the example is if you have some sort of, this is stuff that happens within a trusted environment, that be on your PC or, or something like that, that if you, you might have one app that does not support fancy web services, SOAP or what, or all data, all those things, but you can emit a URL, uh, open a page. Uh, so this is one way to actually poor man's web services to, to, to pass some data into Business Central. So what I have done here is that I have fired up Visual Studio Code. I have with AL Go created a new, a uh, new extension. Uh, the only thing I have done uh, is to download the, the symbols and I, I'm always adding the tenant ID into my launch.json file to avoid uh, suddenly deploying to another tenant in case uh, we have many. We, uh, it's also a, a, a good, good practice to actually specify the sandbox name. So I'm doing that now. Um, so let's Let's do this. So the first thing we need is a page. So I'll, I'll add a new page if I'm allowed to right click. Oh man, call it demo page. AL page 50 demo page. Um, and let me actually just turn on the, uh, the screencast so you can see what I type because I'm, I'm a typer. Uh, caption equal uh, demo page. Uh, use its category equal list because why not? Application all. We need layout. Um, in the content area, we might as well just put in a label saying something just for fun, just to show we are here. And if you have a quote inside the line, you need to double quote it. There we go. Application error equal all. And let's go back to the launch JSON and say that this is our launch page. I'll hit a five. I will hit a five. Come on. There we go. And um, publishing this extension. This is a great extension. Um, let's see if it works. Hopefully. Um, so the idea is that this is our receiving page. This is the page that is going to receive the outside URL. Um, and how do you specify a specific object in a, uh, in a URL? But it's actually quite easy. You can already see it here, sandbox, and then, well, it went away, but page equal. So we got the demo page. So if I, I go up here and uh, say, Sandbox question mark page and then 5100, I get the page. 
So the idea is, of course, let, let's use this. And, and you, if you were quick, you already saw that, hey, what if I add a parameter called demo? You go, hello demo. I would want to intercept, I want that hello demo to be data inside Business Central that I can use for something. So I call a page, it still works because browsers are forgiving the whole way the web works is that if you supply more information, it's the need is just ignored. Um, so let's go head back into a Visual Studio code and we'll stop the debugger. So the thing, the, the, the secret sauce for, um, for talking to the browser is, um, is JavaScript. And uh, the way we do JavaScript in, in, in Business Central is through something called a, uh, a control add-in. Um, and uh, let's call it a UL hack. Always good to name something with hack. So now we want to do a control add-in. Control add-ins are strange because we're not doing this. So control add-in is a brand new type of objects and they do not have an object number. That, like this is a blast from the future in a world without object numbers. So control add-ins, well, since we're just going to be interacting, we're not going to show anything, then let's just make this a single dot on our page just a dot that we don't really interact with uh, because we, we just want to have the chance to do some javascript um so the the controller thing you can specify the controller and has a procedure we, let's call this uh, test and i can add a parameter i integer um, and this is great, but we want, then we're supplying, we're calling the controller and then doing something. That's great, but we want to, we actually want to get data. So, so let's, let's change this into a get demo and, and we don't need to supply any parameters, but let's say we want the text back. Perfect. Uh, not that perfect because all procedures on a control that in cannot return anything. They're actually called asynchronously. So there's not a chance for Business Central to grab the return value. Um, so we cannot do this, but we can do something else. If we change this into an event, not event, but an event, uh, then we are allowed to do this. Uh, well, not exactly this, because what we're allowed to do is that we're allowed to add a parameter to an event, but since this is an event called a trigger in uh, in Business Central, then the parameters we're defining are actually data coming into us. So we 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 have an event here. Um, so I can go back to my demo page, and then I'll just add the uh, the, the control add-in. So you type control, and then you find nothing because in here it's called a user control. Uh, don't ask. And I give it a name and I find my new URL hack user control in here. Um, application area and then that's basically it. We don't need anything else. Um, but as you can see now, I can do trigger and I have get demo. I get my parameter, begin, end, of course, message value from url equal percent ah not area 51 but percent one and then demo so this is perfect i will deploy this and then we need to authenticate our browser because that we need to do all the time. Um, but some of you might have figured out that, hey, Eric, this is not going to work because you haven't done anything. You just define an event and, and think by magic that that event is going to get a value from the, from the URL. And, and, 
Yeah, you're right. Um, but I just want to show the how it's wired up on on the Business Central side. So on the AL side, I should probably say. Uh oh. So the control add in manifest is not valid. What does that mean? I'm not creating a manifest. Well, we are actually creating a manifest because it's kind of this one and, and it's incomplete. Uh, so we need to do two things more. We need to specify a startup script. So a piece of Java uh, script that's going to run when the control add in is loaded. And then another one called uh, scripts that is kind of the library to support. If we added procedures, that would be where those uh, are residing. Um, also, if we have like a third party JavaScript library uh, or stuff like that, that needs to be put in here. But we're just going to do it very simple. So startup.js, script.js. And of course, then I need to add those uh, as files. So startup.js, that's a file. Um, and script.js. That's another file. We'll just compile, see if everything is good. And go back here. Uh, Startup.js, script.js. We got them both. At some point, the, uh, uh, the, the IntelliSense will figure this out. So let's go into Startup. Actually, a, a good thing to do is always because there is a delay. So if you want to call into a, 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 a user control, you need to make sure that it started. So it's always good to create a control ready event. But in reality, we're not doing that right now. So, so we'll, we'll, we'll not do that. But we will grab our URL. Or we could actually start by saying Microsoft dot dynamics uh, dot nav uh, dot invoke extensibility method without an R. Um, and what did we call our method? We called our method for get demo. So let's do that. Get demo. And parameters so we have one parameter so we could just do a simple hello there we go let's see if this works so i will run this again and while i was thinking i need to validate my thing again let's Validation happens a lot these days. I don't know why. Um, let's close some of all these pages that we are. This one is still trying to deploy. You know that when you're closing old form tabs on the browser and then Visual Studio is deploying a new one and, and, and it always happens that you end up in uh, just closing the one is just gonna deploy. But uh, hey, we got lucky this time. Oh, value from URL equal hello. Um, so two problems here. One, I clearly did not supply any value uh, and the value wasn't hello. Uh, so let, let's see if we can can make this a bit better. But But clearly we got some data from JavaScript and we got it fed in to uh, our demo page to AL. So we have data in this variable that's originated in JavaScript. So, so we're almost there. So the only thing we need to do is go back and then let's get that parameter out of the URL. Um, I'll create a new variable and uh, there is a class in JavaScript called URL search parameters and I'll grab the window.location.search because that's the query string part of the, the URL. So now we have it as a, as, as a collection, a structure. So I can say 
Well, if URL params has, and we call it a demo, in that case, we, we, we'll do something, right? Uh, let's make this nice and then and then instead of hello we need to do ul params dot get demo bam so that was four lines of javascript we we're really pushing it here okay so we will stop the debugger from the last page and deploy again see if we need to authenticate i do I will welcome anybody from Microsoft telling me why I have to authenticate every time I deploy. Um, not that I, I can suddenly authenticate. Let's see how it goes. Sending request to Business Central. This is exciting. And the excitement should end up with nothing happening because we should only get a result if our ul actually has the demo so success let's see how that goes nothing happened which was exactly what we wanted so let's not try this again page this one demo equal hello demo i run the page again value from ul equal hello demo so there you have it uh, let's just quickly run through the uh, the chain of events so we have a page on the page we placed a user control uh, the user control has been defined as a control at end in the control at end we have a, a javascript startup script um, the javascript script startup the startup javascript will Go and look at the uh, URL, and if it has the value, it will call that event, and we'll get that on the page. So that's it. That's how you can use the URL uh, inside AL to uh, enrich your environment. I'm always supposed to say this, so subscribe and uh, follow me on Twitter and uh, tell me if you would like more videos like this, crazy hacks uh, in Business Central. I've got plenty more where this comes from. Uh, until next time, have a wonderful time.